Yeah, really good win. Um, well, quite simply, it means we've got a chance going into next week, you know. Uh, we're three and a half points off the top, so we've just got to go out and play our best cricket against Somerset, hopefully win, or we need to win, uh, win the game and then hope other results go away. What was the mood like going into the game? The Hampshire game was slightly disappointing. Mark Robinson said there was opportunities to win that game almost three times. We didn't get over the line. What was the mood heading in and was there a lot of motivation to kind of put things right? Yeah, I think it was, um, it was quite a bit of frustration after the Hampshire game. Like I said, there's, we had quite a few opportunities to win that game and it's a game we should have won, if we're being honest. Uh, and look, the lads wanted to make sure we put it right and I think... Uh, we have the confidence of Wopsy coming in because uh, like, when you have one of the best bowlers in the world coming to your team, it gives you confidence, you know. So we were confident up at Yorkshire. And then, you know, unfortunately we lost the toss on a difficult wicket, but um, I think the way Michael Burge just played in that first innings really set the tone of the game for us. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of resilience there, wasn't there? I mean, people might look to that, those totals and thought we were behind the game, but actually in hindsight, there was some pretty good performances, wasn't there? Yeah, I think resilience is the perfect word for that um even like in the first things like Lammy's scrappy 20 I think he got um before he got a good ball you've got like for his mentioned Burge um just the way he got I think he got 66 16 that changed the game you know uh we we're right behind the eight ball and he pulled us right into it then uh second in Sibs um saw off a new ball did all the hard work and got himself well what's probably worth 100 on that pitch that or to get 45 50 so that's worth 100 on that pitch you know it's all those little areas where we just kept scrapping and scrapping Brezzi's and Milo's partnership and yeah I think resilience is the word um just to be able to go out there in those tough conditions and arguably we had the worst of the batting conditions throughout the game and to get those two scores on the board was really great work from the lads. What was the message during each day's play was Mark kind of playing it down trying to get you to be free or was it kind of a not a last chance alone, but this is almost a must-win game. What sort of messaging were we getting? Um, it wasn't really the latter. It wasn't really like it was a last chance alone. It was, it was just he kept giving us the confidence and belief that if we went out there and played our best cricket, we'd win the game. And I think that's what Robbo's done all year. When we've had difficult moments, when we've had tight games and moments, he just always relayed that message that our best cricket will win the game. And uh, obviously, it doesn't always come off like last week against Hampshire, but. I think three or four times now through the year, Robbo's just kind of got us calm. He's he's just kept relaying that message that just trust ourselves and our best cricket will win. And that's just what he kept saying all week. And that was needed on day four, wasn't it? Because when you lose a whole day through rain in conditions that would have been suited for bowling and then you turn up at Headingley and the sun's shining and you need to take seven wickets and they need 100-odd runs, credit to the lads, you bowled really well. Yeah, look, um, day three is frustrating to lose it. Um, and yeah, like I said, it was sunny yesterday, but I think Wokesy set the tone, um, getting balanced out in the first over. And then um, Brezzy with his catching, what did he take, six catches? Um, when you've got safe hands in the slips, you know you're not having to create more chances than needed. You don't need to create 12 chances to take 10 wickets. You actually, because you've got such safe hands in the slips and from the whole team, you know 10 chances will get you the game. So I think it was one of those Wokesy set the ball rolling. Um, and then all the bowlers were backed up in the field and it was just a good morning for the Bears. And what's the message post-match? What's what's the vibe? What was the vibe leaving Headingley? Well, I was like, right, as you can imagine, we're buoyant. You know, we've got a chance to win a championship with a game to go. Um, I don't think many people have given us an opportunity at the start of the year. And, they, they, and um, especially where we were last year, there were messages from Will, like where we were last year, not winning a game to now being one game away from potentially winning the championship is, um, is a great achievement from the lads. It's, a massive turnaround from last year and to go into next week full of belief that we can win the game and that if we do everything our end, that hopefully um, everything else will sort itself out for us. Yeah, and, and facing Somerset, it does help being at home in Edgepaston as well. There could be a decent following, big crowd, and obviously, hopefully we get the best of the conditions. Yeah, exactly. Look, um, I think Somerset are a team who we haven't played our best championship cricket against last few years. I think our last three... Our outings we probably lost twice and just hung on for a draw. So it's a team we really want to put that right against. It's um, a massive game for us, so everyone's going to be right up for it. And hopefully we're going to get a load of supporters in and a load of members in to really help us over the line because these opportunities to win a championship don't come around often. So we've just got to do our very best to win, win the game, and then just see and hope our results go away.
and as a professional sportsman, these are the games you want to be involved in, isn't it? When you came to Warwickshire, these were probably the games you envisioned that you were going to be playing. Yeah, exactly. Look, um, one of the reasons I chose Warwickshire was I felt it had we had the squad we were building, the club we're building a squad to win a championship. And now three years in, I've got hopefully an opportunity to do that, you know. So that's one of my main motivations to come into the club. Um, and yeah, like you said, as a sportsman, you want to be in the high profile games, you want to be in the games that matter. And I don't think we're going to have a game that matters more for most of us in our career. So we've got to win the game. And like I said, we've still got a, a bit of luck's got to go our way. We've got to hope um, the Lancashire and uh, Hampshire game goes our way. But I think if, as a professional sportsman, these are the games you want to be in and to a chance to win the championship, there's not much more of a stake in cricket, in county cricket. You've already mentioned it as well. There's got to be a little bit of calmness as well, hasn't it? Because four days of cricket, things we've seen it all season. The ebbed and flow. We've won on, we've won chases on day four where no one has given us a chance. We've lost games where we were probably in the box seat as well. So you've got to kind of remember as well heading into this game that one session doesn't really define you. You've got to just keep pushing away and get, trying to get over the line. Yeah, massively. Look, um, I think the biggest thing we can't do is underestimate our, our opponents. Um, they, they're on a bit of a poor run of form at the moment, but we've still got to treat them as a team in Division 1. They're there for a reason. They played good cricket all year, so we can't underestimate, underestimate Somerset. We, and then, like I said, we've got to stay calm. And that's the biggest thing mm -hmm. I think Rob has brought to us this year is the calmness he's brought around our um, group and the belief he's instilled in the players that we can do it. So, got to Take care of his, uh, take care of the fundamentals, and hopefully the rest will take care of itself. And you mentioned this guy's name a couple of times, Chris Wokes. A, how much have you enjoyed opening with him, and enjoying sharing that ball with him? And two, how vital could he be next week? Oh, massive! Um, but luckily, I played with twos a couple of weeks ago with him, um, and then obviously this week, and I've probably learned more from him than I have any other bowler in my career. Just in these two short games, just he's probably got a bit annoyed at me asking different questions and this and that, but. Um, especially in the second team game, I was asking him a lot. <laughs> but look, when you have one of the best bowlers in welcoming your team, it can only lift you, it can only help you, you know? Um, and it just gives you that confidence that even if I don't get a wicket in my spell or Craig might not hit his spell, we've got Wokesy to come and he'll build the pressure and then Brezzy gets a wicket. Or, you know, we've always feel like we're not far away from a wicket when you've got Chris Wokes in your team who, even if he's not taking wickets, the pressure he builds allows others to take them.